What's up, Future Fam Donuts Donation? You know what time it is. It's time to do another session of Logo Therapy. Hey, Zimri Mayfield, if you're hearing this message or your friend friend of Zimri, we want you on the show. We try to reach out to you, but for whatever reason, you're just dissing us right now. And without further ado, let's just jump into my deck. You guys know what time it is. We're doing two logos from two designers today. And back with us, two by two. First up is Mart Beemans. You guys, he has a new studio. It's called Studio Op Mars. The man from Mars, the Martian himself from the Netherlands, and the man whose resting face is very angry. That is him. And then, of course, we have Oguin Davier Loredo, all the way from Monterrey, Mexico. And this is his work. You guys are very familiar with it. Let's get right into it. Now, I don't even know how to say this person's name, Mark, so you're going to have to help me out. Is it Blodgett Matthew Stephen? I think so. Okay, we'll go with that. And here's his logo. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. Is this Ill Design or 3 Design or... I think it's ill-design. Ill-design. I-L-L design. Ill design. I -L -L design. So. That's, that's what I went with. So. Okay. So we have some issues <laughs> already off the top. This is going to be a fascinating one. So without further ado, Mart, take it over. All right, man. Am I sharing my screen? Yeah, share your screen. Okay. I think I'm already sharing my screen. So I'm just starting out the video. Um, just show my process real quick. Okay. This is what I usually do when I... Um, Want to create a new logo? I just go on the internet and I search for some inspiration. So I first made a mood board with some stuff that has already been done before. Make me some notes here. Stuff that I'm going to change. For example, it's, for my opinion, way too busy. I don't really like the topography and the shadow effect. So that's what I'm going to change about it. And I'm here, I'm just on the right side. You will see the mood board that I created just to get a bit of inspiration because I didn't really draw a unicorn before. So okay. that was new for me. Aaron, let's and punch into the full screen, please. I'm it's hard to see because the drawing so no no you don't have to do anything mart don't worry aaron's gonna take care of it okay keep talking you're drawing oh, yeah. this, the unicorn yeah yeah just uh, trying out a couple of different shapes and one of my first ideas was to um, use the word ill inside the uh, oh, symbol that's interesting so that's what i'm going for you so when you lose your you when you don't use the topography then you can still use the symbol as on its own and it still says ill so that was the I basically like that. idea behind. yeah so are you sketching in so photoshop right now yeah, yep, as okay. always. That's yep. my preferred method. And mm -hmm. it's just because it goes really fast and you can easily duplicate and change things. That's yeah. why I'll show you. Well, it's, du it, it's fast for some people, not fast for others. But I know yeah, that true. when you did this, other people were influenced by this and they started sketching in Photoshop as well. So yeah. that was cool. Cool for you. So to actually, the, the last time someone from the audience, they asked me to focus a bit more on the grading system. So that's what I did this time. I focused a lot on the symbol itself and not so much in the topography. Mm -hmm. So that's what we got into later. Mm -hmm. um, so you're also so this, fitting the, the animal into a square to try to make it as yeah. dense as possible, right? Yeah, just so that it becomes like nothing loose. It so becomes a solid symbol. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying out a couple of things here just with the different uh, main stuff like that. Just mm -hmm. really quickly trying out uh, some basic ideas and just refining the sketch as we go. Mm -hmm. So this is the part where I'm uh, adding ge geometry, so basic circles and just straight lines, so that the sketch becomes a bit cleaner. So I just uh, I can quickly forward this a bit because it's a lot of the same. Mm -hmm. So you're still in Photoshop, right? Yeah. Okay. I see. So, so I, I really like to um, create a really clean sketch before I go into Illustrator, so that I already know what it's going to look like in the end. Yeah. And then I just use Illustrator to clean it up and create a vector file from it. Mm -hmm. Now I know sometimes when you sorry go ahead go ahead. Sometimes when your sketch is not that clean, yeah, you can you can stumble onto problems in Illustrator. So that's why I like to get everything perfect in Photoshop and then go into into Illustrator. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Andrea just, says, just so "Oh, I like that idea." <laughs> Who said that? Andrea. Andrea. Hey, if you guys aren't sure whose voice that is, it's Jonah's voice. For the first time we ever. We don't hear him very often because today, on today's episode, Aaron is back and he's editing. He's not fired. He's still here and he's editing the live stream. And Jonah's taking over usually what Mark does in terms of monitoring comments. So if you guys have questions or comments, be sure you drop them in the comment section below. There. That's, that's how you know it's below, not <laughs> up there. Which way, yeah, which good way? job, good job. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, let's keep watching Mart here. Mm. So yeah, this is just basically trying out some variations in terms of how thick I want uh, the lines to be. So I got to feel with a few thin ones and a few thick ones, and but just went forward a bit. Mm -hmm. So this one at the one because else it's not a unicorn. So uh, just 
It's also pretty basic, just using uh, lines that can help you to create a clean symbol. Yeah. In case you guys are wondering, how is it that Mark can work so fast? He's not. It's a time-lapse video, you guys. It looks like he's actually working on it right now in real time, and he's an animal. I mean, he is an yeah. animal, a design beast himself, but this is sped up. Yeah, this was about a total of three hours, I think. Three hours. Like the whole, the whole video, and it's put into 13 minutes, but I'm speeding the video up as well. Mm -hmm. Are you using the fill, the, the bucket paint fill tool, or are you just calling it sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. When I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> or smarter, who knows? Yeah, I mean, this this doesn't really have to look that good. It's just to get an idea of how thick I want the strokes to be and uh, what the proportions are going to be in a, in the final version. Yeah. I so like, when they, when, sorry? I, I like seeing your process like this because a lot of people rush to vectorize it and they're making all yeah. kinds of weird decisions, right? Because to do it like this, you're working really fast, you can try many ideas, you're iterating really quickly and you're exploring things. And when you take, exactly. a, take a look back, you'll see at how many different versions or iterations and the different decisions that Mart's make, making on these things. So it's nice to see this. And the thing is also when I don't do this, then I tend to not try everything that's possible. And when mm -hmm. I do this, like these random ideas pop into your head and then you just have to try them out. So you can try them out real quickly in Photoshop and you, you, can, you can see right away if it works or not. So. Mm -hmm. And the fact that pass over is very time consuming, so that's what I do in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So as you're working on drawing one idea, are ideas for another thing popping in your head, so you want to finish this one and work on the next one? Is that how that works? Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Cool. I'm the same way. So yeah, I can go forward a little bit here. This is why I'm adding the typography and the I decided to keep it really simple and wanted to uh, use the same style as in the, in the symbol. So it mm -hmm. also has the same thickness in the letters and the L is also spelled the same way. Mm -hmm. So that looks consistent with the, with the symbol. I think I spend about 25% of the time on the typography and the rest I, will, I spend on the, on the symbol because the symbol was way more important to me. In this case, because last time people focused, asked me to focus a bit more on the gridding, so that's why I decided to go uh, focus more on the, on the symbol itself instead of the topography. I think. Oh, and you're drawing all these things in Photoshop? Yeah. Wow. But with guidelines, so mm -hmm. I use the guidelines to get the proportions right, mm -hmm. like these. Just trying out if it's if the serif fonts will work or not. But mm -hmm. I didn't really like the serif font here. I think the the middle one is the one that I remember with. So this is where I save this uh, GPEG and then I go into Illustrator and clean it up. Okay. You can fast forward to Illustrator. It looked like you made one more tweak before you brought it back into Illustrator. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm making, I, I got uh, two variations. Oh, one has the mains going up and one has the mains going like this. Oh, I because see, I, see. One, I wasn't really sure which one I was going to use yet, mm -hmm. so I decided to bring them both in. So now, as you can see, I'm um, actually putting the lines exactly on the, on the grid of Illustrator. Mm -hmm. So I can really easily create these helping lines to make the final shape of the symbol. And for everybody that's watching, how did you make those circles equidistant from each other? Um, I got the snap to grid on in oh, okay. Adobe Illustrator. Mm -hmm. And it, oh, as you can see, there's these squares here. Can, you, can people see my mouse? I can not? see it, yeah. Yeah. So there's these, these squares here, and that's what I'm using to count um, how many steps are going to be between the lines. Mm -hmm. So it's the same for the circles here. As I you can it. see, the steps here are equal to the steps between the lines. Mm -hmm. So that makes that makes it uh, so that the symbol is very balanced. I see. So the diagonal lines are also on that same grid. Yeah. Snap to grid. Okay. You are definitely living up to the whole logo gridding promise this time. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Are you using Pathfinder? Um, Shape builder. I don't know what. Shape builder, maybe. Uh, no, I think it's this, this bucket because I like to keep the shapes intact. So this, I always uh, copy and paste uh, the lines on the new layer. Then yeah. I make the lines go away and then I use the bucket to fill in the, 
the space that I want to use for the for symbol. Mm, okay, that's a good tip. Uh, see, preserve the guides. Fine. Yep, preserve the guides. Duplicate like, them. Mm -hmm. I guess there's like ten or twenty ways to do it, but it's just the way that's I got used to it. You know, so yeah. Well, your way is the best way for you. It's always that way. There's a thousand ways to do something. Yeah. Mm hmm. So in the final version, I um, decided to turn the symbol. 45 degrees? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I saw you playing that throughout the sketching phase. What was going on in your <coughs> mind in terms of it being square versus r rotated at a 45 degree? Um, because I knew that there was going to be typography on the right side of it. And when I had it like um, an horizontal line, mm -hmm. I didn't really like the way the horn of the unicorn was uh, floating above the typography. So mm. this way it's um, more balanced towards the right. Mm -hmm. And at first I was pretty bothered by the by the horn of the unicorn actually because it's like sticking. It's the only part that's sticking out of the out of the square. Mm -hmm. But I started to like it more and more because it's it's the, the part about the unicorn that makes it a unicorn. So I don't really mind it sticking out because it's the thing that's tracks your eyes at first, and then you see the rest of the shape, and then you know oh, it's a unicorn. So. I'm curious, when you go to draw the S, how are you going to draw the S? That's actually a letter I like the, last, I like the least, so. <laughs> <laughs> but as I, as I said, I didn't spend that much time on the, on the typography itself this mm -hmm. time, mostly on the, on the symbol. But I still think the typography it, it works with the symbol. But if this was for a client, I might have refined it a bit more. Mm -hmm. What are but these pink shapes problem. that you're drawing here? Uh, I'm just using them as guidelines to create the letters so that they are also the same thickness as the, as the symbol itself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the final. And then, then I just, uh, mm -hmm. like last time, I also prepared some uh, just going to quickly show it, uh, some mockups. Okay. Uh, so this is the final logo. Mm. And this was the, the grid system that I used to create the, the symbol. Mm -hmm. and some variations and some mockups. Nice. Really, that looks really, really good as a sign. Mm -hmm. Dang. If that were a hang tag too, that would look really good. Ill design. Well done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this, this is always what I do when I send the logo off to clients, just to give them an idea of how something will look when it's used in real life. Mm -hmm. So these were the final sketches. So some, from the top left to the, to the bottom right, it's like basically my process in one picture. Mm -hmm. Can we see the final lockup, just um, black and white, the, the mark that you created and the logo? Please? Yeah, okay. Do you have one that's just one, where it's just straight, so I can look at it and just stare at it for a little bit? And then this one have, you mean? Yeah, that one, the lower right. Yeah. Uh, I have to open it. Okay. Show okay. Then hide all that other stuff, maybe. Yeah. Everyone's saying they love it. It looks so amazing, so cool. <laughs> it is really <laughs> good. We might not even need to take the poll. It's pretty obvious the results of this poll, but we'll do it at the end where we go before and after. Okay, there. That's beautiful. Let's look at this. Now let's zoom in. Mm hmm. So yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with the symbol itself, but like I said, uh, I like how the topography of this part, the ill, looks the same as here, but yep. I think this part looks a bit unbalanced. But yes, I agree. You know, I, you. Ran, I, ran out, I ran out of time, so That's I just... Okay. Uh, All right, let's punch in. Aaron, let's punch in full screen. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Can you hide all that junk? Can you hit tab and hide all your garbage? Smart. Yeah, okay. Yep. Let's go full screen. Okay, so... I'm looking at this and I think you're right. The mark looks really good. I think you've done a great job. I like the idea of integrating the ILL, the ill part mm -hmm. of the design into the drawing of the horse itself. By I think, the way, this also shaped a little bit as a D of design. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll give you that one. I'm not sure. That might be a little <laughs> bit of a stretch there. That's called designer BS. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, but I like the ill. I no, like that. Kidding. I also like you tipping it to the side 45 because I like the horse kind of looking up versus charging down uh, when you had it leaning kind of on a horizontal before. And I, I think it's neat how you created a, 
Yeah, an interesting word mark with the ill, so that I see at least two to three components that can be turned into a pattern or a texture. If you rotate it like 90 degrees and you can repeat that, that would look really cool. The part that is really needs a little bit more love, and I know you recognize this already, is the design. Yeah. But for the sake of learning, I just want to talk to the people on the Academy Future site just to talk about this a little bit. You can see that there's some inconsistencies in the letter form. Mostly it's the width to me. The N yeah. feels really narrow relative to the D. And also, we're trying to find repetition in the design of the letter forms. It almost looks like they all come from a slightly different universe. You also mm -hmm. notice the G. Uh, because of the way it's cut and the way it, um, the stroke and the crossbar is drawn, it feels a little different than the, than the D, and they need to feel very similar, right? So Mark's going to work on this probably at some other point in time in his life, maybe. Who knows? But that's really what we need to work I'll on. I'll probably finish it. Yeah, Let's and then you'll share it with us, and we'll show everybody. Now, mm -hmm. let's take a look at the before and after. Let's get those next side to side, A and B, so the audience can vote. Do you prefer what he did originally? Uh, so you mean the, the one that was submitted? Yes, yes. <laughs> the, the blue and the turquoise blue and yellow one. I want to say this as straight as possible, not to tilt the audience uh -huh. to lean one towards one or the other. So the original well, design that was created by Blodgett, Matthew, Stephen. I can't find it. You can't find it? Okay, I have it. What we'll do is we'll cut back and forth between my screen and your screen, okay? So here's right. the original. There it is in its full glory fully illustrated and a lot of people say that's not a logo that's an illustration and it's debatable like when does an illustration become an icon or a logo but that's it ill design hard to read really funky that's original and then Mart's version here boom black and white can you guys see the unicorn can you see the mane of the horse can you read the word mark okay a or b do you prefer the original or what Mart did. Let us know in the comments below. And that was great. Now, thank you very much. Let's give him right, a little thanks, man. Let's give him a little applause, guys. Yeah. yeah. Ill design. Oh There's a lot of people with the audience today. Dang. All right, you guys are coming in strong. Okay, so thanks next. Thanks for watching. Yes. So next up, where are we? I lost my place here. All right. Next, we're gonna talk about a submission by Bryant Seth Walker. Bryant Seth Walker, and here's his mark: Urban Pasta. This is pretty cool. So Davier is like into this. Let's let's see what he what he's gonna do with this or O'Green. All right. All right. How you yeah. doing, man? Good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> do you have a new I, webcam? I, I actually I borrowed the computer from a friend. Yes. The the camera is better. As it looks really see. good. Yes, you're looking really good, man. Okay, so let's jump in. So yeah, uh, I have a video here mm -hmm. with all my process. Okay. I always try to start with some uh, paper and pencil. Mm -hmm. Urban mm -hmm. Pasa UP, I get it. I know I was a little bit afraid about the logo I choose because it's not bad at all. I mean, and I really like it, the idea and I chose the logo just to give it a tweak with my yeah. own vision. Can we do this? Can we move the, uh, the play button thing away from the screen? Just move oh, it yeah. down. Yeah, move it out of the way, please. Further down. There. That's good. Okay. Great. Oh, yeah. So you began on paper. N nothing special, right? No gridded paper. It's just regular old paper. Yeah, you know, sir, just, just, just paper with uh, some pencil. Anything. Nothing special. Mm, okay. I'm curious. Why did you pick this? Of all the hundreds of logos that have been submitted, why did you pick the Urban Pasta Company? Yeah. That's that was because I really like the idea about that the like the noodles cross it out and I don't know uh, I just wanted to to give uh, the logo a little bit more of with my a little more of with my own vision mm -hmm. uh, and something in you you will see one of the things I decided to change was to separate the word mark and the symbol so the logo can be more flexible okay i see i have so to then play you play some like, lettering like, mm -hmm. but nah you you're doing also ligature there connecting the u and the p together i saw one of your yeah something like just to give uh, like a noodle effect you mm -hmm. know and i just 
here I jump it to Illustrator. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna make more fast forward here. Take me through your process. What are you thinking about doing right now? Uh, here, uh, I choose the. It's something similar to the to the original logo. Mm -hmm. I was doing like those lines, pues, are like noodles or pasta. You're masking it off in the circle? Yeah, okay. I make a green mask. Okay. It gives me a lot of struggles. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Because you're working through the problem. Something like that. Like, oh, I can't. I can make it right. Yeah, you're trying to get the spacing on the outside edge to look right, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. I, then I started to experiment a little bit with, with weights and more black lines and just like experimenting. Okay. And when you tried a new idea, do you just create a new artboard? Yeah, I don't know why I I learned it that way, mm -hmm. but I feel very comfortable. And not not every idea I have, maybe just like a, this is a big idea that can work by itself. I separate it from the rest. Mm -hmm. Are you using the pace and side shape function, I or did you so. did you mask it? Uh, yeah, I mask it. Okay. There's a new function inside Illustrator. I don't know if you guys know, but you can actually keep objects within a shape. I don't know about that. Yeah, I'll talk to you about that some other time. All right. Trying to figure it out how to, to make the logo with a, in a black, in white over black mm -hmm. version. Mm-hmm. Whose siren is that? Is that ours? Yeah. This this logo is getting too hot. <laughs> Call the fire brigade, as they say in the UK. Oof. As you can see, I love to make our boards. I can see that. <laughs> it makes sense. I always wanted to to, to I want to separate uh, different ideas. That's why I make a lot of artboards. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes the document more more heavier. Do you know about that? I, I, it's insignificant. It's just vector. It's not going to be big. Okay, so maybe we can jump forward because it looks like you're drawing the same circle of pasta over and over again. Where, where <laughs> does this go to? You will see. You will see. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you just tell me to shut up? I think he just no, did. No, 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 no. Green's like, you know what? Shut the front door. <laughs> shut the front door right now. So get me my, I, I can ha, I can find the the, the right words. Yeah, whatever. Know? No, I got your <laughs> sentiment. I, this is not an issue of words. I get it. So you're you're curving the lines now, or you were at least. Now, what I'm doing is make a smaller version with with less lines, so it can be more legible. Oh, okay. You're trying to simplify it. Yeah. Okay, cool. And if you're not sure what word to tell me to F off in, you could just tell Aaron and he will translate for us. <laughs> yeah, it's like the same circle. But just be aware. I know well, all the all I, the Spanish swear words, so that's you can't <laughs> you can't sneak that one on me. Never, never. <laughs> okay. So yes. now uh once the symbol was defined, I started to to Experiment with the with type. Yeah, that's a nice typeface. And as I said, I wanted to make something separate, separated about the the symbol. Mm -hmm. 
and the, and the word mark. I also try to to modify the type to make a custom type. You will see um, just about here. Here. Just to make more similar similarities about the U, the A, and the N. Make it look like a noodle. Mm -hmm. Ninet asks, what's the name of this typeface? Uh, mm, this typeface is called uh, Alternate Gothic, but I, I didn't use that in the end. Yeah, but anytime you use a typeface and you're exploring, just tell them because <clears throat> they always ask during the, the comments after it's been aired. So good. So alternate gothic, you said? Yeah, okay. alternate. Alternate gothic. gothic, yeah. But I really like it. That one is called um, Mueller or Mueller, I don't know. Mueller Narrow. Mueller Narrow, okay. Mueller Narrow. Two typefaces I've never heard of before in my life, but they look good. Yeah. And I almost finished. And I do a lot of, uh, I don't know if the term, the correct term is uh, support graphics, mm -hmm. but here you can see the... Hey, wait a minute, that's just your logo, man. Mm -hmm. He's trying to self-plug. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are you doing now? I have, I'll have some, did you see that? I'm seeing something. This is up. Is this the beginning of your video? Um, what are you showing us, um, man? Ah, l l okay. No, wait, wait, wait. Now? Yeah, there you go. Yes, I see your screen now, yes. Okay, perfect. This is the, the finished logo. Okay. Here is a version with the, with the Berlin word. So Urban Pasta Berlin, that's a location? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Handsome mark. Some I choose the the color yellow it's as the same as the original. Here's the symbol itself. Mm -hmm. War mark. Mm -hmm. And I made a uh, in the corner the smaller version. Yeah. And this is like the same, the same thing as the original, but but with my, with, with uh, apply it with the style and more supportive, super graphics. I don't know if that is the term. Okay, I'll buy that term. <laughs> super graphics. Oh wait, 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 hold on a second here. <clears throat> Let me see the circular one to the bottom left there. Bottom left. There's two circles, right? Yeah. Um, there's one that says there there has a like a reverse black circle for the Berlin part. Mm -hmm. EST 2017. I'm kind of digging that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. okay sure. The only problem I have with that mark right now is that. Ooh. Whoa. This is what just going for fun. Yeah. Okay. You keep going, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is like. Uh, what is that? Meditation pasta? I thought I was tripping. Something like mandala or something yeah, like that. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And this is the original and my version. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Okay. So let me. Uh, do you have access to the Illustrator file? Can we get in there? I just want to look at something. I want to play art director. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, I, I just, I want to say this, okay, because I just recently got back to, from the Keyframes conference in Orlando, and a young woman, Liz, came up to me, and she's like, you know, Chris, I have to be honest, attending your talk, I wasn't sure I was going to like you if I wanted to stay throughout this whole thing. And I was taken aback a little bit, I'm like, huh, this is interesting, because she told me in, very, in a very honest and vulnerable way, she said, 
I've seen you on your show, and sometimes you can come across as, as overbearing art director. I said, I totally get it. And she shared her own experience with an art director that just really left a bad taste in her mouth. So I reminded her of that person. And so that sucks for me. So now I'm like, shoot, I sound like that person. And what I wanted to say is, at the risk of being an overbearing art director, let's get into it. I just want to take a look at your logo. The reason why I say this is because sometimes when you're working on your mark, you can lose sight of like what's good. Like you do so many versions and you become attached to each and every version. So for whatever reason, we pick one or the other. And sometimes every once in a while, a stranger like myself can walk in and say, huh, that's kind of interesting. I like that. So can we just take a look at something? There's two things that I saw that you did that I, I thought was going to work out really well. So let's get back onto his screen instead of my face, Aaron. Yeah, there we go. There's two things. In the sketching phase, you did a mark with the U and the P made up of several lines and there was a ligature. I thought that would have looked really handsome if you were to draw that. And All they're right. like interconnected. So cut back to me, Aaron, so you could see this. I'll, I'll draw it with my fingers, right? So three stroke U like this and it, it cuts across and comes back. So it's like urban pasta just to have a different flair. But now going back to your screen, the one with the circle with the negative shape at the bottom inverted out. Let's take a look at that. Can we duplicate that and, and work on an alternate version? And I'll give you a critique on this one. Okay. I quite like this one. It's self-contained. It will reduce down really well. It makes for good signage, I think. Okay. So a couple of things. Let's zoom in. Let's punch into this bad boy. So the first thing that I want to say is this, is that Urban Pasta is the brand name. Berlin and EST 2017 are just the location and when it's created, right? So those things are not nearly as important as Berlin Pasta. So I don't think they need to be that big. Generally speaking, our eye goes to the area of greatest contrast. So right now, the heaviest amount of black is where the contrast is. So there's, there's an issue with a hierarchy, potentially. I think it would be better off if you just did the urban pasta, reversed out, and reduced the size of Berlin and ESC 2017 to be much smaller. Can we try to do a little live design? Oh yeah, sure. Let's yeah. try that. Yeah, let's try that. And I don't, I don't like the, uh, the inversion of the circles and the lines. Generally speaking, that's not a good design thing. If you want to use black and white, usually use inlines or high contrast dark uh, drop shadows, and that usually will work really well. Okay, so at the risk of being that art director guy that you guys all hate, and I hate that person too, who sits over your shoulders like, you know, let me do this. Uh, my, my job right now is, is as an educator to try to look at this and help you guys understand if you had me as a coach or a friend and I will look at it and I'll give you a critique. So right now, Davier has done a really great job, and I just want to explore this a little bit. Or Oguin, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so used to calling you Davier. Davier is fine. Oh, it's okay? All right. Thank you. Mm, just let me figure it out. Yeah, you, you take your time. Don't worry. You know, the internet's watching, but don't worry. It's live. <laughs> it's live. It's dangerous. Why don't we take this opportunity to thank our sponsors? All right. We don't have any sponsors, so let's read some comments, Jonah. Oof. Not ready? Not ready. Aaron's the most chill I've ever seen him in a long time. Look at him. Thank you. Look at this guy. He's casual. He's like there. Casual, chilling. <laughs> chilling like a villain. Getting it, getting it done. Okay. So I'll read comments too in case Jonah can't find one. Okay. Trevin is making a joke, but I got to go back to find his joke. Was it funny? Oh, you don't want to see that. <laughs> nah, it's not, you know, come on. Let's work on our jokes. What else we got? We got dead air. That's what we got. <laughs> <laughs> it's, try, it's quite okay to have dead air. It's fine. Be comfortable in the silence. You're right. Let's just take a look at Oguin Davier while he's working. Instead of our faces just looking down. Let's there we go. He'll work silent on this. For the rest now we're going to look at comments. The stream. What's that? Let's just be silent for the rest of the stream. We could do that. I could play some music. You want me to play some music? Play some music. Some hot tunes. All right, here we go. I'll play some chill music.
People are asking, what song is this? This song is called In the Sky, and it's by David Absolute. It's a track available on artlist.io, a subscription platform that we belong to. That's what we're using. Hey, Jonah, I noticed the background is crooked, or is it me? You guys yeah, notice crooked. that? Whenever I straighten you out, or try to straighten you out. <laughs> Why can't I be straight, and the background be straight, and the camera be straight? The uh, background isn't straight. That's oh, it is. okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, straighten out the background. That's the easiest thing, because I'm straight. Camera needs to be straight. But I'm less concerned about the background. Anyways, maybe this is a bad idea, you guys, because this is supposed to be only a 30-minute episode, and I didn't mean to put Davier on the spot there like this. I thought he'd organize the file a little differently, but maybe that was just too crazy to ask. That's quite all right. Let's do this. Let's do the review. Let's do the review. Let's show the before and the after, the A and the B, so you guys know what time it is. Let's do that, okay? Let's look at the original, which I thought was a pretty good mark to begin with. It's simple, it's bold, it's graphic, and I didn't think there was a lot of room to improve it. However, I've already got into it. Yes, we can see. Okay, there's some issues with the original. Let's put the original on the left, please. Is it possible to do that? Or am I being a jerk if I say that? Jerk. Okay, no, don't worry about it. I'm a jerk. Let's leave it alone. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, on the right-hand side is the original. Wow. Uh, just hit pause, dude. All right, all right. All right. What are we doing? Oh, is this is a preview? Stand by. Standing by. Today's the day of technology woes. Yeah, just stay on your guy's face. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said we both look sauced. Yeah, what the hell is that about? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh, Aaron, Aaron. Does that mean like he's drunk? He shows up to work drunk, sauced? Yeah. That must be some British guy saying that. Is that a British term? Yeah, I didn't know I that was so. a British term. We say drunk here in America. <laughs> or plastered. Yeah, plastered. Or wasted. S-faced. <laughs> wasted, yeah. <laughs> There's many things that we say, but we don't say sauced. No. Blimey, Aaron looks sauced. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't even know what kind of accent that was. <laughs> good. Whatever it, it was. Okay. I can only do the fake Will Patterson uh, voice, but... Okay. Here we go. Before, on the right-hand side, Urban Pasta, the original, it had some graphic patterns in there. I'm not quite sure what it meant originally, but you can see the issues that Davier was working through in terms of the tangency between those lines and the inner circle. There's some inconsistencies, so you can see that sometimes it looks heavy and sometimes there's a little white sliver stuck in there. So that took him some time to resolve. So I think this is one of those logo designs where it was just a little tweak. It wasn't trying to reinvent the pasta wheel, if you will. So there it is. Simple pattern on the left is the revised version done by Oguin Davier Loredo. Urban Pasta, Berlin. Urban Pasta. Okay, you guys let us know. Do you guys prefer the original or the new Urban Pasta? Which one would you dine at? Let us know in the comments below. That means, guys, that means, that means. Let's give them a round of applause, first of all. Yeah! yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> You guys are clapping a little bit too close to the microphone. Oh. It might pop somebody's ear and just make them bleed a little bit. Well, you got to bleed for your art, I think, right? Okay, let me get out of the show. I think this is it for us, right? Sure is, Chris. It is. It okay, sure you is. guys, if you're having a heavy case of FOMO, FOMO, that's what the kids say, FOMO, fear of missing out, just be sure you guys find us on Facebook. This is how you find out about events, competitions, and everything else that's good and new in the universe of the future, okay? There's a thread that's um, pinned, I believe. You guys can just go ahead and submit your logo. We're going to just keep looking at the same original thread and we'll pick out a logo. We have three teams of logo therapists that will be digging through and finding their favorite logo to work with and they'll be contacting you to get your Adobe Illustrator or AI file and then we'll go from there. Okay, that's it for our show today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys in a little bit. I believe we're coming back on the stream at 1 o'clock with Henry Kaminsky on our main channel. We're going to talk about click funnels, conversion funnels, marketing funnels, purchase funnels, and all the same kinds of things. Definitely want to check that out. Guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. That's it for me. Thank you both you guys, Mart and O'Green. See you guys no next time. Bye, guys. I'm going to take us out of here with some Isaac Hayes. A classic. Aaron? What can we talk about? Cut to it. Cut to that on the screen. Not that screen. <laughs> Dude, that's the unmarked. <laughs> <laughs>